Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to look at updating a Jesse and Debian environment to Buster. I don't know if I really need to stress this, but if you have a critical system, you only have one of it, you don't have your data backed up and saved, or if it's critical infrastructure or anything like that and you don't have a backup, what are you doing? Create a backup. You should always have a backup of your backup to backup. Uh, if you have any critical information that you don't want to lose. So before you run this uh, tutorial, if you have things not backed up that is critical to you, do that before you do anything else. So if you have an old Linux environment and you are running a server, for instance, and you want to upgrade that to the latest version, there are different steps that you need to go through in order to make that successfully without any issues. And I'm gonna go through those today. So if we jump over here, here I have an old Jesse environment with old packages. It's not the latest upgraded version or anything like that and I want to upgrade it to Buster. So I've written a little bit of script here, so we're gonna go through. First off, we need to uh, do an update on our version of uh, this Jesse, of course. We do an update to get the latest packages of this Jesse release. And when we have done that, we need to upgrade to the latest uh, packages of the release. So we will install the latest image, the latest kernel, we will install other packages that might not have been upgraded yet. And this will ensure that you go from a state where you have the latest and greatest to a new package uh, upgrade and because the latest will probably have less issues when upgrading to a different uh, release um, or distribution. So this is actually a very uh, important step that you upgrade your packages so you don't get that many conflicts between older packages. And if you have installed packages that is not in the repository, so you have installed your own packages, then you need to look into how do I upgrade those? Do I need to create a new version for Buster, for instance, and install that? Uh, I'm not gonna cover this in this video, but it's important to know. Then we can run dpkg uh, large C and checking if we have any issues with our package repository. We can also see if we have any marked packages conflicting uh, in the repository. But the, as it stands with this, we don't have any issues there. If you see any issues here, you need to solve those conflicts before you continue to the next step. Uh, so back to the script here. Now we need to change the name of all the resources in the source list. So this is the command we will run. And after we have run that, if we look in the apt sources list, we see here that everywhere that it earlier said uh, Jesse, it now says Buster. The only places here we have Jesse, we can change that to Buster as well, if we like. It's not that important up here because this is uh, the cd-rom install commands. So when I actually installed this earlier on, it had those for the cd-rom that I installed from. So I can actually remove those comments because those doesn't really add anything. So we need these four lines. We need the security updates for Buster and we need the uh, normal packages for Buster. So it needs to say Buster here. You might have main, you might have contrib, you might have other um, different packages that you want, non-free for instance. 
but you need to update to the latest distribution that you want to update to. It might not be Buster, you might choose an even newer version if you like, but this is something that you need to do in this file. Uh, next up, we will look at the whole directory of apt and see if we have any other files that contain Jesse. And we see here that we have some keys that has Jesse in them. And these will be updated automatically by the system when we are installing new packages because we will get new keys for Buster. But if you have any other files that has the word Jesse in it, you might want to look into that as well if you need to update those. Next up, we will remove uh, the apt list changes. And this is a change log thing that keeps track on all the change logs for all packages when you upgrade them and then tell you what have changed. And that will slow down the update. But if you are very careful and want to look at every change, you can keep this installed. And after you, um, after you have done the upgrade, you can install this package again if you want to have it for updating packages later on. But if you want the update to get go smoothly and don't be uh, required to look at all the changes while you are upgrading, you need to remove this package now. Next up, we do the actual upgrade. We first do an update. We will update all our sources. We will have all the new packages in our repository downloaded and ready to be installed. Uh, after we have done that, we will do a full upgrade. And the difference between a normal upgrade and a full upgrade is that we will upgrade and install the new kernel. And we'll also install uh, all packages and remove any packages that will conflicting with the new packages. So if we only do an upgrade, we, we need to resolve if there is any packages that has a conflict with the new packages that we want to install. Full upgrade will remove conflicting packages. So you need to know that there is a difference between upgrade and full upgrade. So I will run the full upgrade here. Here you see that the old keys are not available, but we will get new keys. So we do a full upgrade. It will upgrade a lot of packages. This will take some time. So when it has updated all these packages, I'll be back. Now we are somewhere in the middle of the update and we get the question there if we want to restart specific services. In this case, uh, this is an option that it asks you if you want to restart services that are running. If you have services that are required uh, to be running in the machine, you might not want to restart them during this process and should say no. But in this upgrade, I think it's safe to say yes, even though I'm running this over SSH, that connection will not break during the fast up, uh, restart cycle, but packages that are running on the machine is gonna be re restarted during this process. So if you are um, either know that you will restart the full machine after you're done, you might say no here, or if you are unsure if it's a good idea to actually restart the services during the installation process because of any reason, then you say no. But I think that you should be able to say yes to this question because when you are doing this upgrade, you don't want any critical services running on your machine. You should have put the load on a different machine during the upgrade process. So I will say yes to this question. And now we are back. We have updated the system to the latest distribution and everything is installed and set up. And it is all also updated a lot of configuration files. And if you have done changes to your configuration files, it will have saved those changes to original files if it can't 
merge them together. You can, you will also get information of what files have changed and what, and also uh, merge uh, suggestions sometimes. But in this case, there were no <laughs> configuration changes that I didn't, um, that it couldn't merge together with the new configuration files. So I were lucky in this case. But here you can still have some work to do to get your configuration up in the correct order. So go through your system, check your configuration and see that everything looks right and that everything works that is critical for your, your work. Next up after that, we can do some cleanup. This is something that is not required. You can do it if you like. First off, we, I do an auto remove, so it will remove all deprecated packages that is no longer needed and will not be running in the system. So this can clear up some memory and remove things that are not used anymore. So this is just removing some packages that is no longer uh, required by the current installation. And last but not least, we do an auto clean to remove anything that is left by the installation process. So there were some images or some kernels and some firmwares and so on that were <laughs> still in the system after the day update. So these are the steps that you can go through to do a system upgrade. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you found this video interesting. Are you planning to do any upgrade to your system or have you done this before and uh, found this guide good, bad? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.